Hello everyone and welcome to Sabbath weekend. You've already heard that Sabbath weekend gives us a chance to celebrate our team members by encouraging them to spend the weekend with their family and their friends while still having time and not missing out on our worship experience. But you know, another reason that we decided to do Sabbath weekend is in the hope that our entire church would experience online campus. Online campus could never replace us being together, and it's not meant to, uh, at a physical location, but it does give people the opportunity to be part of our weekend who don't live near one of our physical locations. Uh, it's a great option for people who are not well, who are not able to come, uh, for people who may be considering coming to church, you know, you're inviting a friend or a family member and they're not quite ready to actually come, but you can say, hey, check us out online first. So we've been excited for a while now about our online campus continuing to grow and it's developing into an interactive community, adding to our church family from various places in the nation and the world, even locally, um, we've had people that have left home where they're viewing the online service on a baptism weekend and actually come over to the physical location and get baptized. Uh, we have people consistently giving their heart to the Lord at our online campus. So today, you're part of the online campus and we're so excited that you have joined us today. Happy Sabbath weekend. I want to begin today with our normal uh, expression of prayer and openness. So if you would, I'm going to ask you, uh, everybody, right where you are, just say this with me. Say, my heart's open. My mind's ready. Make me better, God. By your word. I receive it. I believe it. And I won't be the same again. In Jesus' name. Shout a great big amen. Now turn to somebody near you and say, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. The other day I was looking at a picture of my grandsons hugging each other. And there was a, a phrase on the back of Kyan's shirt. He's the eight-year-old. He's hugging his little brother. And, and that phrase, is, his shirt caught my attention. Uh, and, and it said this. It said, the future starts here. The future starts here. And it just, it stayed with me. It stuck with me. I thought, man, that is so, so absolute, so true. Like it's, it's so certain as a statement. And so I, I thought I, I would share with you today uh, from, from the idea that we're staring into the eyes of a new year. And there is one thing for sure. And that is that the future starts here. Here is the starting point for your future. One thing that's important to know when it comes to the, the here of your life is that where you are internally, meaning in your soul, your mind, your spirit, is a lot more important than where you are in your circumstances. In other words, in your circumstances right near now, some of you are, are maybe in transition. You're graduating from school or you're, uh, you're right now going into a new job or some of you might right now be preparing to get married or you're preparing for your first child or your third child. You know, you're in a transition time in your life. Others are in a, maybe in a, uh, in a place of pain right now. You had a tough year. You had some losses in your life. So there's these circumstantial kinds of positionings in all of our life, and, and they're very unique to all of us. But what I really want to talk about is how your future is formed, not by what's around you, but by what's inside of you. Your future flows from within you. And so when you think about the idea that your future starts here, like it starts right here. In other words, your future is being formed out of whatever is inside of you right now. And I want you to think about that because that could be 
a, a frightening thought, a scary thought, like an alarming thought, like you know what's in you and it may not be really positive. And, and, and if it's not, that's what this message is for. I want to prepare you, I want to help position you with the recognition that whatever's in you right now, right here today, your future is coming out of that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything that you do flows from it. The Good News Version reads like this, a little bit different, but it says it, says it so uniquely. It says, be careful how you think. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. So on this weekend, I want to help you get in position for the best year ever, for a year of growth and gaining ground, your progress, fruitfulness in your life. And, and, and I want you to realize that, that here, wherever here is, is what's determining your future. And if the here right now inside of you is not the one that's going to pr produce the kind of future that you really want to have, I, I want to help you to get ready by changing what is inside of you so that you are prepared for the best year ever. See, God's got blessings for you this year. God has promises with your name on it. And you don't have to beg God for favor. And you don't have to earn God's goodness and mercy. You just have to be in a position to receive what he has already qualified you for. So the first thing that I want to say, I'm going to give you a few of these, but the first one is prepare in the present. In other words, get your heart and your mind inside of you in a place where you are preparing right now for the future that God has planned for you. Get ready, get ready, get ready. The future begins now. 2 Corinthians 6 reads like this. It says, Dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter in to this wide open, like this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness that you feel comes from where? Look at that. It comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. So what the writer here is saying is he's saying, prepare yourself right now in the present for the future. Like, like, like you're, you're, the smallness you feel right now, it's going to hold you back. So your lives aren't small. You're just living them in a small way. Open up your lives. Live openly. Live expansively. And the writer here knows that it's because of uh, 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 of the fact that the future is flowing out of what's inside of them, that he is encouraging them, open up your lives. One thing that's important to know is that when it comes to the here of your life, it's where you are internally, your soul, your mind, your spirit, and it's a lot more important than where you are in your circumstances. Your, your future is formed not by what's around you, but by what's inside of you. So prepare yourself in the present. The present is a time to prepare yourself. Secondly, let go of the past. Too many people go through life thinking somebody owes them something. And if they didn't have a perfect childhood or if they got let go from a job after years with the company, if they came down with an illness or were betrayed by a friend, or maybe suffered loss in a marriage, some of those people see their past as setting limits on their future. But God never promised us that life would be fair or that life would be trouble-free. He did promise that if you stay in faith, he will take what's meant to harm you and he will use it to your advantage. But you have to let go of it and not allow it to be a factor that limits your faith for the future. Your future starts here. <laughs> your future starts here. Philippians 3, verse 13 is a great reminder of not holding on to the past. 
the writer says, I'm not saying that I have all this together or that I have it made, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I got my eye on the goal. I got my eye on the future where God is beckoning us onward. I'm off, I'm running, I'm not turning back. Now, in the, the King James Version or other versions, it would say forgetting the things that are behind. It's just really bold about looking forward to the future and, and setting your heart, setting your mind, and running forward and not turning back. Thirdly, see the possibilities of the future. See the possibilities of the future. Here's what I'd like you to do. It's the last, it's the last weekend of the year, and you're looking out at the new year with some sort of, I don't know, some sort of an attitude, even if it's, even if it's like just a, a lethargic attitude. There, there's some kind of attitude uh, that, that is going on right now. So let's just reposition it. And I'm going to ask you to think of yourself and think of, your, uh, think of yourself as a landowner and, you know, a farmer or a horticulturist and think of your future like an empty field. Think of your future like a field that is just sitting there full of options, full of possibilities, if you do nothing, the field stays as it is. But if you have a plan, and if you put the plan into action, the field will respond. The field does not respond to a wish or a command. The field responds to a seed. Does that make sense to you? Like, think of your... Think of the field, like you're standing, you're looking at a field, there's all kinds of possibilities, okay? If I'm a farmer, I could grow corn in this field. I could, I could get wheat in this field. Uh, we, we could have tomatoes in this field. Like, think of your future. It's bare, it's open, it's like a blank sheet of paper, it's like a blank whiteboard. Just think of it in some way as something that is just waiting, just waiting for for whatever it is that you are going to invest in it and sow into it. When you start thinking about your future that way, you can start seeing the possibilities of the future, seeing the, the potential of the future. And then lastly, what I want to encourage you to do to position yourself today is pray bold, God-sized prayers. Pray bold, God-sized prayers. Too often, we all get trapped into praying little prayers, small prayers, apologetic prayers, like, God, I'm sorry I'm coming to you again today. <laughs> Weak prayers, sustaining prayers. And how you pray determines what kind of life you have. So I believe that this year, the size of your prayers will influence what you experience in your life. Small, barely get by ordinary prayers are going to produce small, barely get by ordinary life. But big prayers, bold, unusual prayers, that's a force for bigger things to happen in your life. The Bible doesn't teach us to pray small, apologetic, weak kind of prayers. Over and over again, the Bible encourages us. Jesus himself, he's like, come on, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you will find it. And then he puts these analogies with it and these word pictures like if a earthly father wants to give good gifts to his children how much more would our heavenly father want to do good things for you in other words he's prodding people come on pray with confidence pray with faith pray with expectation 
There's nothing that positions you better for an awesome year than praying bold, big prayers in your life. I don't know how you might be feeling right now in terms of your past, but let's, let's do this. Let's leave it behind. Let's, let's put it in our past. Let's just say today, whatever hurt me, whatever bothered me, whatever irritated me, whatever distracted me, I'm going to put it behind me. I, I don't know how you feel right now about the field that's, sta- that, that's in front of you, but I'm just going to ask you, like, Start thinking about the possibilities of the field. Like, what, what am I to do in this field? What, what do I want to do with this thing called my future? Dream big. Think big. And then I want to encourage you, like, like, get those prayers going in a big way. Because this year, this year can be the best year of, of your life. Don't worry about last year. Let's think about this year. And let's, let's believe. Let's think big. Let's see big and let's pray big. Let me give you one more verse in closing today about about prayer. James chapter one, verse six literally says, ask boldly, believing without a second thought. Ask boldly, believing without a second thought. I think of that like without any hesitation, without like, being apprehensive. Just go ahead, go big, go bold. So this is a today, uh, hopefully on this on this Sabbath weekend, just an opportunity for you to think in your mind, you know what, I've got some adjustments to make. and, And I'm going to position myself and put my inside man in a position for God to work in my life this year. I'm going to position my thoughts. I'm going to position my, my spirit. I'm going to get rid of stuff that maybe I need to get rid of, and I'm going to draw in new habits that I need to bring into my life. I'm just going to get in position on the inside in my life. And I promise you that when you and I line up and get in the right position with the things I've talked about today, we create an atmosphere and an opportunity for God to work freely in all of our lives. I'm going to call it best year ever. Some of you knew I was going to do that today. (laughs) Best year ever. I called it that last year too and the year before, but let's call it that by faith. Let's just believe God. Best year ever 2019. Amen? All right, I want to pray with you today. Uh, Those those of you who are believing God for an awesome year, uh, just join with me. And if you're with a husband, a wife, a friend right now, you want to reach over, join hands together. Let's pray a prayer of faith. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this weekend, for our church family, for all you've done for us in 2018. Now, God, we're looking out. We're looking forward. We're looking into the future with great hope, expectation, anticipation, And I pray today, God, that you would speak to each and every one of us individually how we can position ourselves in a place where you can work freely in our lives, that your will can be done, that your kingdom can come in a new, fresh way this year. Pray, God, you would use us in new ways. I pray, God, that you would flow through us. We want to be a light. We want to be a help. God, we want to make a difference, and we thank you that by your grace and with your power, that's exactly what's going to happen this year. And I also want to pray right now with anyone who would say, I want a new beginning in my life and my relationship with God. Just if you're that man, you're that woman, and you say, you know what, i I, I got to get in alignment with God again. I want, I want to start the year off right, and this year is my year to serve the Lord my year to connect or reconnect with God's plan for my life. If that's you, I want to invite you to join all of us and let's say it out loud together. Say with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Make me a new person. I receive you now. You are my leader. 
You are my Lord. And I won't be the same again. In Jesus' name. And I know we're not quite there yet, but I want to say Happy New Year and congratulations to all of you that prayed that prayer with us today. Welcome to the family of God. God bless you, church. Thanks so much for joining us online. Here's what we would love for you to do. Click on the logo on your screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every week we're uploading our messages, bonus content, and even some videos that are guaranteed to make you laugh. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.